Okay, well, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we're getting back to the actual text of the Masterclass book by Mishi and Mark Olson. Uh, and so we're on chapter three, and we're going to cover the back game. Uh, this is a chapter written by uh, Michi, um, I'm sorry, Mochi. I keep saying Michi when I mean it's Mochi. This is Mochi and Mark Olson. So this is Mochi's chapter um, about back games. Um, and so we'll, we'll get into it. It's a uh, very interesting chapter. Chapter, I think it it uh, it's a, another instance where we have a very broad topic where you could write quite a bit out of it and really make a whole book or, or possibly more out of it. And he's he's trying to cover a lot in a, a single chapter. Uh, so we'll I'll, we'll try to expand on it to, to the extent that I can. But first of all. Um, uh, we wanted to cover which is exactly what a back game is. Um, I think mo most people know what uh, what a back game is, but um, but just to, for people who might not, uh, it's it's when you you have uh, two anchors. So white, we have two anchors on the two and the three point, and black is going to try to bear in uh, without getting hit. White is going to try to hit black, and they get him trapped behind some sort of prime. That he might have, uh, and so the key and, and and in this type of game, there are a lot of very unusual things that go on, uh, and your strategies and tactics are much different than in a normal uh, normal game that we play, which is basically you know every other game that we we played or any very situation we've gone over. So these are really weird, um, and so. Uh, the key thing here is, is timing, which is actually kind of like prime versus prime. Timing is extremely important. In fact, it's probably, for back games, it's one of the most important things. Um, and by timing, uh, what we mean is that, uh, in this case, white has to have enough time so black is going to leave a shot and white can hit it. Uh, bearing in, black's bearing in on white with these two uh, two points here, uh, it's very likely that, that black is going to leave a shot, at least one shot at one point. Um, and so in order for, for White to win this game, he's got to get the shot and hit it and be able to contain the black checker behind his prime um, and then get his other checkers around to, to get off before black does. Uh, so this is, and this is a very high risk, uh, a volatile game. And these typically, uh, let's see what this one says. Um, so, this, and, you know, so this is almost a 50-50 game. Uh, black uh, actually isn't favored here. That's interesting. Um, uh, but has 25% gammons. So uh, white, uh, we actually, if we give black more timing, uh, like that, say, uh, now it's suddenly it's shifted black just, just on, on timing alone. And now black has, you know, 24% gammons. 57% wins. So uh, very volatile position, uh, very high risk, um, but you know, plenty of chances on both sides. This is a bit, you know, this is black is 55. If we move these up, maybe it's like 50-50, I would guess. Yeah, it's almost a 50-50 game. Uh well, but black has high gamut. And actually, white has a few gamuts of its own. Um uh, so very volatile position. Um, so yeah, timing, it, it, timing is key here. Um, and one the typical method for, for timing that we're going to use is, is the opposite is the pip count. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about that. Uh, not this necessarily in this section, but in the next session. Um, and, uh, but also structure. So here, uh, and actually as, as I put this on, white is, uh, white here is actually favored to win this one, despite you know being down ninety six pips, uh, because of what, it's likely that Black's going to hit, uh, leave a leave a shot at some point. Black will have a double shot against it, which will put him make a favorite. White has a good structure here, uh, uh, currently a four prime, but it's going to be uh, that can be pretty formidable uh, for Black to come in and try to get past it. So actually, White is favored here. So this is an example of a well timed. Uh, back game, and, and you know, white is actually favored in this one. 
I think the board you're showing, Gary, isn't the same one you're talking about. Um, which, uh, oh. You're saying white has four points? No, white has two points. This, um, uh, and you you said there's a difference of ninety points in the pips, but there's only a difference of sixty two. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's because I'm sharing the wrong screen. Let me try that again. Thank you for pointing that out because you're probably thinking I'm a complete idiot doing that, which you would have good reason to believe that. Now you see ninety six down here. Yep. Okay, that's better. All right, sorry about that. So yeah, so I was showing all these examples and and then you didn't see them. So anyway, here here so here white has fifty five percent. So white is favored here. We have two points, the two and the three point. Um, and white is favored. Uh, and if we give black more timing, say like this, uh, now black becomes favored. And again, high gammons. Uh, so it's very volatile. So here's an example where white is ex favored. White has uh, excellent timing. He has a good structure. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's the type of backing that you want if you're, if you're white. Uh, take this and just uh, destroy uh, white's position. Um, and we can see white has no timing. Uh, 37 pips is, is not enough. White support has already crashed. Um, uh, white's chances are down to 8%. And Black's at 91% with 28% gammas. So a huge, huge difference in this. Um, uh, again, uh, white strategy, Black strategy is simply to bear off without getting hit. Um, hopefully gamming White. White's, white must hit uh, in order to stay, stay in the game. But because he has board, he cannot contain White. And it's just, it's you know, it's a uh, bad, bad situation for white. Okay. Um, let's look at some examples of, of other positions and, and the impact of timing. Uh, and, and, and the, and the tactics, tactics you're going to use as white. So, well, either playing against the back game or playing the back game. So here we got white has 5-3 to play. Um, and uh, black is uh, white's up by 64 pips. Uh, what do we do as white with the 5 3? So, question number one Are we going to hit? Should we hit this back checker? This we can hit the 18. You don't, you don't hit, you don't want to hurt your timing. <laughs> so, that's you know that you don't want to hit, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We don't hit. Um, so twenty one sixteen. Well, or or is it? Or do we make the two point? Yeah. We could make the two point seven two five two. Anyone think we should make the two point? No. I th I think you want it. Doesn't white want to make black crunch? So, yeah. so no. by making the two point, you're leaving the opportunity to hit you on the bar point and, and escape. Yeah. I mean, I, I've heard, Gary, that when you're playing, either you're playing on either end of a back game, whether you're on offense or defense, you want to play pure. So making the two point and burying checkers behind the three point would not be as pure. Does that kind of make sense? Um, uh, yeah. Um, you don't want to bury checkers when you're playing a back game. True. I I have I have difficult because people have different understandings of what playing pure means. Yeah. Uh, and so I it, and it's not a it's not an established concept as as far as I can tell. Yeah. So, but yeah, the point is not to make this the two point. Whereas you know typically you would your opponents at the bar you want to make a point but not not in a back game. Uh, we want to come out with the five there. But what's the three? If we come out with the five, what's the three? Do we slot the two points, hoping to be hit to improve our timing? 
Okay, you're asking the question. So it is that, and so yes, you so the the theory is okay, slot the two point for timing. So yeah. can you see why that would be helpful? Well, what if we get hit? Doesn't matter, you have plenty of flexibility. You don't get it hurt. Yeah, so let's see we come out. And then black hits us. Let's say they get a two one. And maybe does that. So that's, I guess, maybe the worst thing that could happen. And uh, should is this something that we need to worry about? No, you got a six point prime. Yeah, no, not, we Black's behind a six prime in this case. Uh, so he, he's just going to bring his checkers in. If we dance, Black's got another role to bring his checkers in. You know, so so what? Um, eventually, if we keep dancing, he'll break and he'll break his board completely. We'll come in with a five or a six. Uh, and Black is, has nothing to do but just keep crashing. Now, it's likely that uh, we'll probably get hit at some point uh, bearing these around. But with Black with no board, we're not really concerned about it. So um, we'll let back to the original. This. So the original position, uh, yeah, and the correct answer is to come out and to slot. Mm -hmm. uh, just look at these, the hitting play. Let's look at the two, two point play. This one is down here. One of the things too that, that um, uh, Mochi doesn't talk about is that there's been some criticism on XG as to how it plays back games. And um, not everyone thinks that it, it has the full understanding of, of this. So we'll look at we'll be looking at a lot more plus pluses uh, on this. Uh, and but uh, but uh, Mochi does use XG on the plus plus for his example. So we'll go with that. But just to be aware, there's some yeah some uh, less confidence. I would say I mean, for most backend questions or problems, the answer is whatever XG says it is. And that's the answer and everyone takes that. Not everyone always agrees with XG on, uh, uh, on back games. And some of them claim they do better against XG on back games than, than normally. No, no one claims they can beat XG regularly uh, for regular games. Okay, so top play is coming here. out. It's like, I'm sorry, sorry, who said? I have, a, I have a question. So if you, if there was no open point on your board, would, if you, if the, if that was filled, would you hit then because your opponent only has two points in their back game? Like this? Yeah. Now would you hit? Um, well, let me ask you this. Do we, do we help? How do we do on timing? Let's just focus now. I think uh, timing is the key, the key aspect. Um, well, in this situation, we're, we're pretty much fully developed. We have a six prime. And and as long as we hop out, we're you know we're fine. But so how how does this how is this going to impact timing? Given that, that white now has the two point. Okay, so we have, so if we hit black here, we put another checker on the bar. Does that improve black's timing or does it weaken black's timing? Doesn't it get complicated, Gary? Because based on what you're saying, you'll say, well, it improves backs, Black's timing because there'll be more pips. But I mean, are, isn't this on the verge of being, I don't want to jump to a head in, in the lesson, but isn't this on the verge of being overtimed if you hit him? Because he's, he's going to have a really hard time not crunching his inner board with what he's got left in the way. Of well, if, he, if, he, if Black comes in right away, that's true. But if you put another checker on the bar for black, yeah, uh, he's more likely to dance, um, and he could he could well dance, and by the time that that white uh, is forced to break the board, yeah. okay. and so that could that's more likely to preserve. Now, uh, the thing with back games is that you know a bad roll uh, can ruin your back game. So in this case. If black comes in and rolls, you know, double fives or double fours or something big like that, he, he's 
basically done done for. But here, if Black is on the bar and he rolls double fours, well, he's he's just nothing's going to happen. He's going to wait till he comes in. So I don't think the answer here. Um, and actually, look at this one. This is odd. This the the top play. Let me put it on plus plus. Is actually to break the prime. Yeah. So here's the, the top play, uh, which is you know, breaking your breaking your six prime. So the, the black rolls the five, comes in with a one five three five. Well, it's not forced to hit yet, but he he it will might be forced at some time. Um, uh, this is coming out. That's I think that's what most people would do. Um, this one breaks the back of the, the six prime. So you're actually breaking your prime early. Uh, white uh, in this case, but you're not hitting. Here's a hitting play. play okay, thank you for showing that. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go back just back to the original one and we'll go over the uh, what these the top three plays come out right. So the right play is actually to, to come out and slot. You're actually looking, hoping to get hit, actually, to uh, increase, to decrease Black's timing. Uh, uh, next play is just to running out, you know, safely. Uh, hitting, yeah, I mean, the advantage of hitting is, that, well, the, the one advantage that I didn't hear anyone say is, with the extra check on the bar, is there are more gammons that way. Um, because the extra check on the bar, Black may dance a long time. Uh, and if you get back to, you know, you have four checkers off and, and black still on the bar, um, you've got good gammon and possibly backgammon chances here. If we look on this, we've got 37% uh, gammons and 5% backgammons. Um, and those are pretty hefty numbers. But the best play, you've got 34% gammons and 3% backgammons. So, um, you know, there is, there, you know, there is that. Um, Okay, let's go on to the next example. So double twos. Um, what do we play here? Seven five. I'll just do thirteen five. You do thirteen five hitting, uh, hitting and covering. A seven five would cover. Of course, you got two more to play. But is that the right play, and and why? Mishi says the uh, back person having the back game wants to be hit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, and, and and why? To slow them down on their board. Yeah, well, timing. Yeah, timing. Here. Um, uh, again, we'll talk about black is black is down by sixty eight. That's uh, that's some timing. Mean, it's not considered great timing. We'll we'll talk about that more next time. Uh, so yeah, hitting black uh, puts him back, gives some greater timing. Um, that's a disadvantage. On the other hand, you do have the five prime, uh, which is nice. So let's look at the answer. And the answer is not 13 yeah. to 5, uh, or 13 to 9, 9 to 5. Which is actually a pretty clever play and probably right in most cases. But here, it's a blunder. 
the, the, the couple of decent plays. Uh, the best play is 13 11 with three and and then and then actually breaking your your midpoint I'm sorry your uh, bar point um, to cover uh the next best play is to break your bar point again and bring two down uh you know that's a that's a I, I don't know that anyone would do that because you leave the, the double shot here the chance of hitting and making that you're breaking your four prime um uh this one this one is even wilder this is uh look at the final on this one this is leaving four blots around a black is on the bar but um you're leaving four blots and that's and this is a better play by far than what i think what you know most people would make if they saw it uh uh and, uh, I, you know, before looking at this, I probably would have done this uh, uh, because it looks, you know, this looks pretty good. This is a five prime, um, blacks on the bar, he's clear the back point, um, but, it, you know, it's the wrong idea. The right idea is uh, don't give black more timing. Uh, you know, bring your checkers down. You want you do want to make the five point. Um, or, I'm sorry, the uh, yeah, the five point because you need that as a landing point where you're going to bear in. You're going to bear in and, and are likely to get hit or at least leave a shot at some point anyway. So this makes it easier to bear in safely, and you're going to have to make that point eventually. Uh, but no, it's timing. Don't um, you know? Don't give up the timing. Uh, timing is is important. Now, just to uh, Gary, can can you just go back to the one that looks so good? Um, the position before. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, this. Is is this what you're uh, looking for, Anne? Anne. Yes, it is. So, so move the men so so we see see the finished play. So that's the finished play. Okay. So explain to me why this is so terrible. Well, it's not it's not terrible. You're still favored to win 55 percent with 28 percent gamuts but um the problem with it is is that it gives black a lot of timing to to uh to wait for for white to come around leave its shot um for black to hit it and also for black to make his board to make his own prime on, on his side of the board so that's what we're trying you know that's the key to the that's the key to understanding bad games is the timing is really one of the key issues. Timing is more important than having this five prime. Um, you know, here we're, we're the best play is actually giving up the five prime or giving black a shot, uh, and then the the other plays um, also give up part of the prime. And we are making the the five point, but you know we're giving up a point. We're giving up part of the prime. Not likely to remake remake this and leaving two shots here. Um, and the third best play actually leaves four blots around. Uh, and plenty of chances to come in and, and hit again. Um, so yeah, that's why back games are weird. Uh, you, all the all the your normal rules of, of, of thought processes, uh, you have to reconsider them and think of think of what happens to timing because timing timing is more important than normal things like uh, blocking and and racing and not getting hit and things like that. Um, just. Uh, Want. So by by doing that, you're extending the length of the game. Is that correct? Um, not necessarily. Um, you know, maybe if you do get hit, it certainly if he comes in and hits you again, hits you back, it will extend the length of the game. 
because you'll have to recycle a checker and bring it all, all the way around again. But the idea of this game is that, you know, White's wants, White is looking for Black to get uh, big doubles, which will make him crash, crash his board. And if Black crashes his board, White wins, basically. Uh, and Black is trying to avoid that from happening. Black is trying to maintain a build, first build, Black doesn't really have much of a board here, but build a board and maintain it long enough to get the shot for white, because white is, uh, I don't, I haven't heard percentages, but uh, it is very likely to leave a, a shot, a, most likely a double shot, uh, at least once, and probably more, more like two or three times before white can get past black here, and so black has to be ready to to hit the shot. Uh, well, he will be ready to hit the shot, but he also has to be ready to contain the checker once it gets hit. So. So that's the idea. Now, just to, to illustrate this a little bit further, let's suppose that uh, White made this White made the play. It wasn't, I think, the second best play. Um, oh, no, that's the first. Yeah. White makes the right play here. He brings three checkers down to here, and he, he breaks his midpoint to uh, cover his five point. Now, uh, and he did that so to avoid uh, hitting black uh, to, and ruining the timing uh, or giving black more time. Now black rolls to 5-3. What's the right play for black? Well, I know you're going to say he shouldn't hit, but I would do um, because I'd be hoping to make uh, the bar point. Then what? So, so black. It's black's role. What What are you saying, Ray, about the bar point? I know you're going to say that black should not hit on the eighteen point. Yeah, I would do because uh, that gives black a chance to make that eighteen point, which seems to me to be better. Yeah, point. yeah. Well, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's. It, it would be, yeah, it would be. It's very tempting to hit black on the eighteen and make the six point. Because now we've got uh, a, a nice three uh, three prime with strong board, um, and you know we have checkers to to extend the prime, not right away, but uh, for containment. And we've sort of broken through. We can get out of the back game. Um, uh, one of the one of the adages I don't think uh, Mochi mentions it. Or at least I haven't seen it yet. Is that you know the best way to play a back game is to avoid the back game in the first place uh, because it's so uh, it's so volatile um, and and you give up so many gamuts playing it uh, uh, so yeah this this seems on the, on its face to be uh, a great opportunity to get out of the back game and put yourself in a stronger position when we look at it. However, and here's the, the obvious play. Um, so yeah, so the hitting play is the wrong play. Not quite a blunder. But the right play is to, you know, is to cover the six uh, and, and bring a checker down. Interestingly, uh, we're, we're not moving this checker. And now, uh, why is that? Any ideas? Well, we don't... get hit. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't we, we don't mind getting hit here. Black cuz getting hit here will extend black's timing. And it's a yeah, it's it's also things turn around and it's, it's possibly an extra block to hit white with, I guess. Yeah, but... the, yeah, there may be yeah, you you're not looking to hit white here, at least not right, right now, but maybe uh 
you know, maybe that's a good thing to do. Maybe you roll double fives to make the three point. Now you have the a four point board, um, and and with no timing uh, left because you rolled the double fives. And so White may be forced to leave a shot that you can hit. That may be your best game plan. Uh, and if White does hit you, uh, then you have more time. Um, so uh, you 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 want to leave that there. Um, but you know the what you know the obvious play is is wrong here and, it, and it's because of the timing you're 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 well one of the things that that uh, uh most you will get into a little bit that not as much as i would have liked is what you know when do you when do you break your back game and go with a forward game um yeah and the, he's he sort of implies certain rules but doesn't uh well, I'll try to come up with some more some examples and hopefully piece some things together. He doesn't really flesh that out that well, but, uh, and, but in here the situation is you, you you you're going to stick with the back game, and the back game you want timing, so you're not going to hit. You're just going to you're going to wait for White to come in, uh, and and hit him. Try to hit him when he leaves a shot. Okay. Okay, next example, four, two to play. So clearly we could hit here. Do we hit or not hit? Moshi says don't hit. Okay, so maybe we come out with the four. What do we do with the two? Do we slot the four? Yeah, we could do that. And of course, we're, it's, we it's about weird because hit? it's weird because the way Black's board is, Black could also hit us and more or less force us to hit, hit him. I've mm -hmm. seen people do that where they just spread out their whole board. And then when they hit you, you have to hit them when they come back in. Yeah. And that helps their timing. Yeah. Kind of in, in a backwards way. Yeah. How about nine, seven, nine, five? Okay. And what would be the advantage to that? Well, you're way ahead in the pip count, so you should play safe. And you shouldn't hit. Well, it is safe, I guess. It I guess it, if you do 2014, um, yeah, uh, you that's even safer. Well, no, no, but you still leave it a double shot, but yeah, okay. Well, let's not labor too much. Um, so the best do these plus plus here's a hitting play there's there's a plunder play. yeah so the right way is to come out without hitting and to slot the four point um, you know and again the idea is that we don't hit Black Scott will look at the Black Scott sort of marginal timing. It's just, it's time, actually, this, for, for the, this back game, it's not a great timing. Um, so we don't want to hit and give it more timing. We slot because we do want to make that point, the four point. Uh, if Black hits us, then, um, you know, that just gives us more timing and it breaks his, it breaks his back game. Um, so the top play is, you know, to come out and slot. 2014 is the next best play. Um, you know, I, not as aggressive. I, like, well, you know, it doesn't give up the jokers. Like, double choose is probably a joker here for this play. Um, but it's it's you know the same idea. Don't don't get hit. Uh, you're still giving up the double shot here. So if we do, if you do, black does hit us, then um, you know, we'll have more time. We'll be able to recycle, re, uh, circulate that checker. Um, the next best play is actually hitting. So this is not, you know, it's not a blunder to hit necessarily here. 
but it's not the right play. Um, and then coming in quietly uh, is uh, not not a terrible play either. Actually, it's 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 not a blunder. Actually, a plus plus, but uh, it's not the right idea. We we do want to make this point, uh, and so we get we get two extra we get two builders, but we've taken away one for making that point. So, um, uh, and we 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 also wouldn't mind making the eight point. So we take away a builder for that too. But again, the idea is, you know, timing is, is Black's problem here for the Black game, back game. So don't give him, don't solve his problems by um, by hitting him. Um, yeah, and just to look at it again, if we make the right play, and Black has the chance to hit us. Again, you can hit us with the two, cover with the three. And so should black, you know, what's the right play for black? Um, and it, yeah, that is the right play. Let's see. Um, let's see, but I guess, yeah, the point here, if he makes this play, that's the right play, but he's at 36% to win. If we bring back the initial play, mm. uh, mm. black was at 29%. So I guess it helps him. Black was at 30%. Okay, so it's a good play for him. But again, you know, Black is not, you know, the, the world didn't crash if Black gets a, a joker of a roll. You're still fav pretty heavily favored to win. Okay. Gary, are there any uh, rules or observations you can make in terms of how large the difference in pit count is to determining whether you actually have a back game or not. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. We'll get into that next time. Actually, uh, 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 Mochi put together a chart, which we'll talk about next time, showing you what the, uh, well, the way he put it was the, the minimum, uh, the minimum, uh, I guess the minimum timing in terms of pip count based on and it, it. Well, it depends on which, which anchors you have. So the, you know, the, the one and two point anchors, that's, you need the most timing for that one. Uh, and that's actually about, um, I have it here. I think it's about 87 pips. Yeah. 87 pips. Uh, so, yeah, and, and we'll, uh, we'll look at some examples of that in terms of how that informs, you know, what you want to do here. So, uh, and, and one of the reasons you're, you're hitting here is you've got 66, you don't have enough, you don't have the timing here to, to do this successfully. So you're going to hit and break, and so this tells you to hit and break your back end. Um, but it's, it's uh, if you had the books on page 247, well, I'll show it to you next time. Um but it's 87 pips for here. Now, if you come up with a two, three back game, it's 59 pips. Um, and that's the way Mochi determines that is um, that's your kind of minimum. So if you didn't have, if you had if, if white, we're gonna W, we hadn't doubled you yet, but we're gonna W and you don't have 89 pips in this with the eight, the one, two back game, uh, you should pass is basically the way he did. So it's kind of like the point of last take. So you don't have that that length uh, of timing, then you should, then you're not going to be successful. You need to pass. Um, and so, and he, and he covers that for each of the, the two point games. Uh, okay. One last example for today. Uh, five, two to play.
so um, you know, actually we we could make the four point, which in a normal normal play you make a you can point on your opponent and, and make a strong point like the four point. That that's got to be, you know, that's what you would do normally. But we're not in a normal situation. We're in the. What what about a double hit? Eight, three, six, four. Because then there's a good chance Black's going to have to hit you when he comes in. Yeah. And that'll help your timing. That would, so, yeah, that would certainly help your timing. Also, uh, running running from 22 is probably not horrible because you're just recirculating a checker without. But don't you really, you really want to make the ace point, right? Uh, what do you need? This ace point? Yeah. So um, so getting hit gives you a chance to do that. Yeah. Well, why do you say you want to make the ace point? Well, because um, I don't think a, a three five back game is a very good position. Yeah. And um, having three points, I've heard, is really good because yeah. you can hold on to the five point yeah. for a while and then break it later. Yeah. And still have the one three back in. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would say that um, in terms of, you know, yeah, having the ace point, probably the ace three is probably a little bit better, but it's better if you have timing mm -hmm. for that. Um, right, right. So mm -hmm. you need to evaluate mm -hmm. that. Do we have timing for that? Uh, the, um, yeah, the, the the deeper back games are probably more successful if you have the timing, if you have the board. Uh, however, they give up more gamuts because if you don't, if you're not able to hit the shot, or, or you get your opponent gets lucky and gets past your prime, you, you lose more gamuts that way. The 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 more forward back games, uh, you give up less gamuts. You don't need as much timing. Um, it is a little bit easier for the opponent to get by. Usually, you're not trying to manipulate it to get the, the deeper points, or you're, there are other things in right. So, so in this case, uh, you know, the answer here is to step out, is to step up with more timing. Uh, let's look at the top plays here. This is making the four point this play. I didn't. Let's look at the double hit. Let's see if it's here. Mm. This one. That looks like one of my blunders, 195. Yeah, so it looks like the double hit here is, uh, is taking it a little bit too far. The hardest thing about the back game is you have to think opposite. Yeah. 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 You really have to focus on, on, you know, timing is the first thing. And so, you know, sometimes that means you want to get hit and you don't hit your opponent, which is completely backwards from what you, what you normally are want to trying to do. So here the top play is just to run out. Um, these are uh, one of the you know, kind of, adages that are is that when you're playing the back games, you put checkers where they belong. So uh, in this case, you know, these checkers are pretty well suited. You, you'd want it, you want to make the bar point or the five point if you're white here to build, start building your, uh, your prime. So uh, I guess is that's why you're not going to mess around with it too much. That's why you're not going to hit, um, you know, hit loose and that sort of thing. You know, this, this, Slots your four point, which is fine, but uh, and your timing helps because you can bring this checker up. You're not going to crash from that, but uh, this one, I didn't see any advantage for that one. Here's the double. No, this is making the four point um, again. Normally the right play, uh, but in this case it's the wrong play. It just it ruins your timing, even though you get a good point. Um, and the double hit is just a little bit much. Um, yeah, I'm certainly certainly you're 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 likely to get hit. You'll have great timing, but uh, 
maybe that's not such a good idea. One of the things too that we don't we're not getting into is you know it depends on what your opponent's board looks like or or what his prime looks like. So it may be better, um, you know, because the four prime, you know, you don't really want to mess with the four prime too much. I mean, it's not it's not as strong as like a five or a six prime, but uh, you know, you roll, you, you come in, you get hit, and you come in with your checkers, and then you roll double fours, and all of a sudden, you know, your board is crashed. Um, I'd just be interested in seeing uh, if we had something like this. The double hit might be a better play. Okay, so here, this is interesting with this play. Where's the double hit? At the top. Here's the double hit. Oh, that's a double hit. It's about equally bad, it looks like. Yeah, so here we've broken up Black's prime. Um, the question is, do we even want to play a back game from here? Um, and it actually, it looks like now, now we're, you know, having just broken this prime up, we're not even, we're not talking about a back game anymore. Um, it's best to play with a four game. Now we've got, we can come out with a six, we can come out with a four. Uh, keeping our our you know our two two anchors as a as an option uh, here even running out is good. Uh, the double hit is still still the bridge too far there. Um, and again, because we you know we don't need to play the back game here. Okay, so that is enough for today. That should give everyone a nice headache if they're not going with playing back games. Um, but that, yeah, again, that's the kind of, you know, back games are weird. You've got to play weird. Um, and, you know, the rules rules are all different. Um, and, and, well, rules are different, but sometimes they're not. You know, here's the case. We just, we just, we took a point away from black and all of a sudden normal rules seem to come into play, you know, where we hit. Um, hit and make a point as opposed to not hitting it. This was almost a blunder. If black cat is is the uh, the the uh, bar point there. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you very much, Karen.